All right, so now no more dark cave like we did uh, a couple weeks ago. So, hi everyone, my name is Joe Boskis, and welcome to another episode of Dive Soft TV. So, so glad you guys could join us this week. Uh, we have another follow up episode to Jacob Slama's Liberty in Detail. Um, today, I'm going to be diving into uh, even more detail on the Liberty back mount units. I have the back mount counter lung unit and I have the front mount counter lung unit sitting behind me. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to go through each component and we're going to build the unit from kind of from pieces, right? All right. So just like uh, each week, be sure to like, share and comment on the video. Uh, if you guys have any questions, this is a live stream. So, you know, jump in and ask questions. Uh, but just like always, thank you so much for tuning in. So, all right, let's get started. So I have, uh, so we'll jump over here to our small camera. So we have here our, uh, we have our main back plate. So the first thing we're going to start out is the frame. So the, on the frame here, this is kind of the fundamental component of the Liberty. The unit is kind of is built. All right. it, basically what keeps everything together is here on this back plate. All right, now we got our detailed camera. So if you if you kind of compare it to your standard back plate, it's quite different. So you can kind of see here on the back side, this is a, a stainless steel back plate. It also comes in titanium if you want to be a little bit lighter. Bring the camera down a little bit. There you go. So we have, you can see we have these different cutouts and we have a cutout here on the bottom. So that's to optimize hose routing on our uh, back plate. So, um, and then we have different brackets for our stand to be mounted to directly. So it's all kind of designed to work together. And then now on so here you can see that the hose routings come through this cutout here on the back plate. You can see that my unit's probably a little bit dirty, but we have these cutouts right here for the hoses to route through, then they route up and then over the shoulders onto your manual addition valves, your um, pressure gauge and everything else you need, which we'll dive into that a little bit later. So, but this is our, uh, this is our standard back plate in stainless steel. Like I said earlier, it also comes in titanium. Something that's also very important is this little lever right here. So when I mount the unit, which we'll see a little bit later, this unit, this lever has teeth and they bite into the uh, plenum, the head and scrubber connection, basically holding everything together. And then the diver's back is up against this, so there's no chance of it opening up with a properly fitted unit. Okay, so, um, and then our harness. So here we have a, essentially a Hogarthian DIR harness. You can see I've got extra little bits and pieces on mine. Just like what we always try to do is whenever we're teaching this type of thing, we always, I always encourage my divers or my students to make their harness really unique to themselves. Uh, it needs to be a good fit. And so it's nice and comfortable. And that you, you know, the standard fit is usually you want to be able to fit a couple fingers underneath your harness. So this is the back mount counter lungs. So you can see I have my D rings. They're pretty, uh, they look like they might be a little bit off, but they're about the right size for me. Now, I also have my pressure gauges routing through my D-ring. I like to do that to kind of hold everything nice and clean together. And then these attachments here, these are for the back mount counter lungs to attach to. Just like Jacob said in the video before, they can also Velcro directly onto the harness. But it's pretty similar to the front mount counter lung setup. On the front mount counter lungs, the attachment points are up here, which I'll show you guys a little bit later. So that this renders this unnecessary. All right. 
Also something that I always want to talk about is our quick disconnects. I used to not really be uh, too big of a fan of quick disconnects. I used to think, you know, oh, we don't want to overcomplicate the system with a plastic buckle that can go in and break. But this this is a stainless steel uh, quick disconnect attachment. It does a great job of help of of basically functioning because you know very often with other buckles they'll often fade they'll become very very brittle when it comes to when you're diving in a lot of chlorine or in salt water you can get sand caught inside of them these cobra buckles do a great job of staying connected uh, of functioning so they're able to handle really tough environments and it's it's a standard connection I like to only put a single piece in. Uh, it really helps me getting out of the system. So it makes it really nice and easy, right? So, all right. And then we have just a standard crotch strap. On the front mount counter lungs, this crotch strap is actually split into a V. And I'll show you guys that a little bit later. So it's just a lower attachment point for the front mount counter lungs. All right, so we have our stainless steel back plate. We have our harness. And the next thing that we're going to take a look at is the stand. So most units do not come stocked with a stand. Um, kind of in the past, you know, they were kind of just a luxury thing or an aftermarket thing. Uh, what I have here is I have uh, the wide stand for uh, the Liberty Rebreather. I also have two offset D-rings on the side so these are really great for side mounting cylinders um, it's an additional piece it's just screws on to the side i know it's not really centered on the camera but those offset d-rings are really nice this is also a really good location for an argon bottle but i really like this big wide stand it makes it very very nice and stable whenever i'm getting suited up into my rig and you can then you can see here there's a plastic piece right here this part uh, is plastic but it's designed where the liberty rebreather will sit here uh the bottom part of the plenum will sit right here all right and then here's that lever that lever action locking in right so next we talked about the stand and now let's talk about the first stages so these are apex dst4s um with uh, these are with these re, uh, these regulators are slightly modified in the sense that their upper part. Let's see if you guys can make sure I get to the right angle. There's a block here on the on the top where the first state uh, where the intermediate pressure is for the hoses. This block is modified so that it can be designed to mount directly into the back plate, so it actually screws in. So don't, don't think you guys can see, but the screws to the other side are right on the front side of the rebreather or right front side of the harness. So, but this block is basically designed to integrate into the back plate and then the hose is, are angled so that they route directly up through the cutout and into where you can properly route them. So... The purpose of this uh, of this kind of configuration, like this, so you guys can see. The reason for this type of configuration is so that whenever you mount your cylinders, they're always going to be at the same height every time. There's basically no type of adjustment that needs to happen uh, or that you need to do. The cylinder will mount directly here onto the first stage, and it's also allowed to swivel. So that if I'm putting the cylinder in here, I can kind of adjust it so that it's in the correct angle I screw it in and then I'm going to velcro it shut here onto my rebreather so I'll actually show you how that goes down so this is my left side so that means the diluent will go here So let's see if you guys can see. So you can see how that swivel action works. And I'll screw it in so it'll be nice.
because there we go it didn't take an, take too long right so you can see here that it's able to swivel Right, so it makes it nice and easy so that I can adjust it to put it at its exact height. And I take, there we go. So it's gonna be the same height every time whenever I'm mounting the cylinders. So I'll go ahead and I will do the other side, get the oxygen mounted on. All right. So with other units, a lot of times that these are mounted via sh shadow mounts or different hose clamps, what we try to do is to really minimize any type of entanglement points, any type of entangle or any type of chances for base for the unit to be assembled basically uh, wrong or just to keep it consistent every time and to make it as easy as possible while you're mounting it, your cylinders every time. All right. So uh, the, the unit, uh, when we dive with these, we dive with three liter or 23 cubic foot stainless steel or steel cylinders. And so uh, we also have weight pockets that go on the outside of these. I usually don't wear them because I don't wear heavy undergarments here in Florida, but we do have the weight pockets that they sit on the cylinders. They're very nice, very comfortable, and they also are able to be uh, ditchable very easily. All right. So now let's take a look at the counter lines. So we have our uh, we have our back mount counter lines, and then once I finish the back mount counter lines, we'll go to the front mount counter lines. Make sure there's plenty of space. So these are our back mount counter lungs. You can see how they're independent. They're separated from the unit. A lot of other back mount counter lungs, they're kind of a single piece and they have to be sandwiched between the back plate and between, uh, between the scrubber. So this is, I have my right side. So my right side has my overpressure valve right here. So this is a pull dump cord that routes over the shoulder and so this guy sits right at the top of your shoulder so that you can pull on that opv so that when you do a dill flush it can push the water out through the bottom All right so i'll go ahead and attach this guy now so the way that we attach our counter lungs you can see here on my starboard side or my right side that we have a zipper on the zipper at the bottom of the zipper, we have this Velcro uh, piece. And this Velcro piece is designed to secure the end of the zipper. And they're also, they're, they're also different so that I can't take my right side and put it on my left side. So it's designed that it only goes a certain one way. So I don't know if you guys can see well enough. There we go. It's like a zoom. And the zipper just goes right there. So then I bring my zipper to the end and I'm just going to Velcro that piece together. And then I'm going to secure it by locking the Velcro and wrapping it around. So it's definitely not going to come undone. And then I take my right side. I have my right shoulder harness. And all I'm going to do, clip it right in. And just like I told you guys, that OPV sits right at the top of the shoulder. 
There you go. And it's going to sit like this. Nice and clean. Now let's do the left side. So here on my harness, you can see I have a couple of little extra bits that, that I didn't really need to talk about. So I have this bungee here on my left side so that I, it can help me when I'm side mounting cylinders. I like to keep it. I like this little grab piece because it helps just to pull it over. But that's what that little lone bungee is. Now, I have the zipper on this side. It's a little hard I'm trying to get it on camera, but we'll see how we do. Hope everyone is keeping warm. We had a cold front in Florida and it got to the 60s. It was crazy. We're all wearing winter jackets here in Florida. 60 degrees is too cold for us here. All right, we had a zipper going down. And then let's see. Yeah, yeah, you can barely see. I'm gonna take this Velcro, then I'm gonna double and then I'm gonna lock it. 30 at my place. That's 30 Celsius. Yeah, 30 degrees Fahrenheit in Florida. Come on, no way. So, um, but yeah, we go ahead. We clip right in. Voila. So it sits. Uh, it kind of sits right up here. When you're wearing, when I'm wearing it, it, basically it's nice and taut. But you can see that it has plenty to move, so it's never pinched at any time, which is important for the work of breathing. Now, what we, what we spoke of earlier about, you can remove this piece right here, just a Velcro, and, you, and I can take this Velcro and just wrap it directly around here. Now, some people will say like, well, when the counter lungs clip off like this, it sits far from your body. In reality, it doesn't, not when you're diving. When you're diving, it still sits very flush, but it's not gonna get pinched. When you Velcro it and Velcro it, velcro it around the strap it's going to sit a little bit closer to your body but and it's still not going to get pinched but i prefer to have this configuration just very nice and comfortable easy to remove on and off and i really like to minimize the amount of times that i'm undoing and redoing velcro because over the span of the lifetime of it it can really wear it out all right also something that Jacob mentioned in the video, this handy dandy handle. All right, yep, yeah, this is our handle. I like to keep it sitting right here. Sometimes it can be sitting on the opposite side, but I like to have mine on my front side of my wing. So, but it can kind of go either way. All right. So we have the counter lungs attached to the back mount counter lung unit. We do have now when we'd be doing this, we would have raise this up a little bit all right when we would be doing this we would have we would be following our checklist we would be following the steps on our checklist since we're not going to be diving and i'm just building it to you kind of just building the unit straight up now this is our hose connections for our manual add valves i like to put a green tape for oxygen red for diluent and this is our automatic diluent valve connection when the loop's on, everything sits very nicely, but we'll get to that point in a moment. Right, next we're going to move to the front mount power lungs. All right. So, our front mount counter lungs. You can see I already have all the hoses attached, so I'll just undo them real quick. You can see it doesn't take too long at all. So our loop goes from left to right side. Our inhale side is on our diluent. Our exhale side is on our oxygen. I'm going to disassemble it real quick and then reassemble it and show you guys that it is pretty quick.
So, in a couple of other videos, I have shown you guys uh, the real specifics of the counter lungs. So, this is our oxygen counter lung. Just the way, uh, so they're, each of them are three and a half liters in volume. And so about seven liters combined. But we see we have this, we have this top connection right here. And it's going to go to the very tip top of the harness. And then we have this lower connection down here. And remember what I told you guys about the crotch strap. This is this is the the front mount counter lung crotch strap, and it has buckles to the top of it that attach to the counter lungs. If you look on the back side of the counter lungs, there's a sleeve right here. And there's a top sleeve and a bottom sleeve. So for this top sleeve, we use we velcro around the strap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it right here. Nice and attached. Now, why do we Velcro it around the strap? I like to do it because it keeps everything nice and close to the harness. Now, you may ask, which, uh, which counter lungs offer the best work of breathing? Now, historically, we've seen that the front mount counter lungs offer the best work of breathing. Uh, there's a lot of other reasons why some people may prefer front mount counter lungs to back mount counter lungs. It's really up to the user's preference. I know that initially I did a lot of my diving with the front mount counter lungs. And the reason for that was, A, offboarding was very it was very easy. And, uh, and, and what I was doing was offboarding gas. And then, B, the work of breathing on the front mount counter lungs is historically the best because you have the hydrostatic load directly on the, in front of your chest, and it's high on your chest. So now, what is that? How does that look on your diving profile when you're underwater? So that will cause you to kind of to easily raise a little bit. So it looks like your knees are kind of dropping when you're in the water because you do have this air cell right in front of you. Now, with the back mount counter lungs, the work of breathing is different. It's not a significantly worse. Uh, I know it's for me, it's difficult to notice if the work of breathing is different, but it is it is a little bit more difficult to offboard and the way that we offboard with the back mount counter lungs is through the first stages and once we get to the connections here i'll talk a little bit more about that but your profile your diving profile will be a little bit you'll be a little bit more in trim with the back mount counter lungs because the air cell is now kind of along your back side so it's almost like where a bcd wing would be so, so here we are on the um, front mount counter lungs. Right in front of me so you guys can see it. All right. So this hose right here I have is for my bailout valve. So remember, we go from our left side to our right side. So this is our inhale counter lung. So here in this inhale counter lung, uh, I have my diluent gas, this is my diluent pressure gauge. So I like putting that red tape on there just so I always know that I'm looking at a diluent pressure gauge versus here on my oxygen with a green tape. I know I'm looking at my oxygen pressure. So these are our diluent manual add valves. So manual addition valves. So just like we have some, uh, like we have Rebecca saying that a lot of people do not have enough chest space for these counter lungs because it's very big. Some a lot of people like a clear chest. For me, when I'm diving, my pro, uh, it's it's able to form fit on my profile very easily. Now I'm a different shape than you know I may be different from the next person, but for me, it's a very comfortable fit. But that's something that's still a diver preference and is based on each diver to their own. So here we have our automatic diluent. Let's start from the bottom. So we have our diluent gas add. So this is our manual add valve for our diluent gas. You can see that it is a quick disconnect. So for example, if I wanted to uh, say my diluent gas was getting low 
or I wanted to introduce additional diluent gas, all I would need would be this inflator hose from another cylinder and it can go in and plug straight in. Then I'd be adding gas into my diluent. So we have, we also have these bayonet fittings. You can see, uh, I'm not sure if the connection or if you guys can read it, but we have here on the side uh, a direction to open. So you need to push to unlock. So let's see, push down, you rotate it following the arrows. It's always harder on camera, right? So, but they're designed so that they can rotate 360 degrees. So that in case I am offboarding uh, uh, outboard to my cylinders, I can rotate to whichever direction it needs to go. Now here up on top, we have our automatic diluent valve, our ADV. So this is a mechanical ADV versus the diaphragm ADV, which we have on our side mount unit. And we also have on the back mount counter lungs. So this ADV is just, it's screwed in on a low pressure hose. Now, the different components that we have on here is we have this inline shutoff. So a lot of uh, a lot of divers, if you're kind of keeping minimum loop volume, it's highly likely that you'll be every time you're at the bottom of your breath, you'll be firing the ADV. So a lot. So in order to kind of control that, or they want to have minimum loop volume, you can have you can shut off the ADV. So you just slide it forward, and that now it will not fire. So you can see there's that bayonet fitting that goes inside. And so the way, so this is a mechanical ADV and it has this spring on here to give it a little bit more tension so that it doesn't fire as easily. But as the counter lung collapses, it adds gas. Cool. Right. So now I will reattach. So remember, we always do everything two finger tight. We don't take a wrench to, to this and over tighten it. Inflator hose. Nice and secured. Okay, so these are the front mount counter ones. There you go. Any questions, comments, concerns? All right. So we have. Uh, so I showed you guys how the counter lines attach, and the different components on the counter lines. I don't think we went over to the oxygen side. So quite important. So here we have our oxygen. Uh, manual add valve, add valve. So per CE requirements, this, uh, this fitting is going to be typically different uh, so that you cannot accidentally put a diluent hose into your oxygen add or vice versa. So it's designed so that they're, uh, they don't get mixed up. Just like our diluent add is a push button feed. And then here, what we have is our overpressure valve. So it works kind of like a dry suit OPV. So I can adjust, I can make, uh, I can change the adjustment of the pressure, right? I can have it all the way closed, halfway open, so that'll take more pressure to open. It. Now, one major benefit of the front mount counter lungs is how easily it is to get water out of the counter lungs, out of the loop. So. We have our left side and our right side. So say we get water into our mouthpiece, we have water that travels in and then it gets blocked by a T-piece. So that T-piece has a little wall inside that will block the water from going through, but it'll allow gas to flow through. That water will get blocked and then it'll drop into the counter lungs. Where is it gonna collect? It's gonna collect right here at the bottom. So then you can do a diluent flush 
and you can open this up and it'll just blow the water it'll push the water straight out of the counter lungs very easy to do and it's, uh, it, it allows the unit to be very tolerant of allowing water because water is not going to uh, get past the teepees typically and it will go straight into the counter lungs and you can expel the water this way cool yeah it's a big benefit of the front mount counter lungs you can do the same thing in the back mount counter lungs it's just a little bit different because of the placement of the of the loop right now here got to be very organized. I don't want anything to fall off my little island. So back to the back mount counter lungs. See if I don't pay attention, something will get pulled in the All right, there we go. So now here in our back mount counter lungs, we have our uh, OPVR pool dump going to be inside so the way that i like to have it i like to have it to where it's between my neck and my shoulder rather than on the outside of my shoulder if it's on the outside of our shoulder it might be harder to find but if it's sitting here on the inside i go to my neck and then i reach back and that pull cord is going to be right there so just like on the front mount counter lines if we get water into our breathing loop water is going to be blocked by the T-piece that's going to be here in the loop, which we'll see that in a moment. And the water will trickle down to the counter lung, to the bottom of the counter lung. And then here we can do a diluent flush and we can blow, the, the gas can blow and push the water out through the OPV here. Now this one is not adjustable. It has a fixed uh, braking pressure, but it's, it, it works very, very well. All right. Now we'll get to the loops. So there we go. All right. So actually what we'll do next is we will go to assembling the head and I'm going to attach the head to the uh, rebreather body itself. So I have here, I have my scrubber. This one's not filled. This is the extra large scrubber. So you can see, so, but they're all the same size here. And then the, the, the extra large scrubber, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. The extra large scrubber is about 7.7 .7 pounds of sorb. So it's a bigger scrubber uh, compared to our regular plenum, which our regular plenum is a five and a half pound scrubber. And it has the water trap at the bottom. This unit does not, uh, does not have the uh, wa same water trap as the regular scrubber. This one, basically we use a sponge at the bottom and that'll act as our water trap. Right. So, and then here I have my head hiding it behind the camera. So it's nice and easy to get to. Right. So Jacob showed us uh, that everything that's on here, all the writings, they all have a meaning. They're very important to, so that you know how to remove and add the breathing loops onto your head the way that this guy attaches we have here we have this piece right here um, and then we always check our o-ring make sure it's nice and uh, properly lubricated and clear of any contaminants and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, line up the bottom piece there you go it's nice and flush and then i'm going to push down there you go. Now, it, when we do our our breathing, I'm sorry, when we do our positive and negative checks, it's a really good indicator of that we're having a good seal. And then the back plate does a great job of making sure that we're all locked up here. You can see that uh, one part of the back plate goes in here. And then the lever locks in to, with his teeth here inside, keeping everything nice and flush. Now, this is always fun to do while being on camera making sure nothing falls down. So then I clear everything. So another thing, this stand does a great job of keeping the unit up while I am assembling it. So 
if you can see here in the bottom, there's little divots for the feet to go into. If I can get it. And then I'm going to take this lever. All right, I hope you guys saw that. It's only going to happen once. I'm just kidding. No, I know you guys aren't going to be able to see that. But it will lock in right here. And uh, it's a little difficult to show you guys as the unit gets pretty tall. But once she's locked in, it's very secured. And then I do this Velcro just so that I can feel that and get that nice and warm feeling. That everything's nice and snug into the unit. All right. So now we have our plenum installed. We have the, the handsets and the heads up display. I always want to make sure that they're going to the uh, in front. They're not getting entangled. They're not pinched. They're not caught on anything. Oh, quickly, what hose is this? Oh, it's my diluent hose with the red tape on it. All right. And I have my oxygen feed right here because it's got the green tape. And we have my oxygen solenoid feed right up here. I don't know if you guys can tell. So I can maybe raise the camera. No, it's okay. So we have the plenum installed. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the loop. I'll adjust this camera a little bit. There you go. All right. So we have all the cables going over. And so that we're going to make sure that not, uh, nothing's getting pinched. Then we're going to go and get our loop. So we have a variety of... Uh, so what's very important is with the uh, unit mouthpiece. Now, you can either have the BOV or the DSV. So the bailout valve is what BOV stands for. And then we have the dive surface valve. Now, all of our components are designed to be very modular. So... For example, if I have the dive surface valve, I can use the dive surface valve with the back mount counter lungs because I, I can install these manual add valves on here. Let me grab you a DSV so you guys can see. So you can see very slim profile. Ooh, ah, very nice. And so, uh, and then when I add them two together, you can see the difference between the DSV and the BOV. Now, these are, are these attachments on the bottom of the BOV are the manual add valves. Those manual add valves can be put on our dive surface valve mouthpiece. I love diving with the bailout valve. It's a very important safety piece, I think. Um, so the way that the BOV works, in this position, the loop is closed. You see that upright position? And then... The loop opens make sure there you go doing everything backwards because i'm looking on camera so now i'm breathing off of the loop so say for example i have a problem i need to go to my open circuit scuba backup all i do is i rotate this piece the barrel and then now i'm breathing out of our apex uh, this is an apex second stage regulator so i'm breathing from a known gas just right off the bat just with the flip of the switch here we have our we have our oxygen. This is our oxygen manual addition valve. So what we saw there, this is just a lever, it's kind of a trigger. So if I want to add oxygen, all I need to do is go to my mouth, and then I have my mav right there. You see right here we have this big metal piece. So what this metal piece is, it's a splitter. So it's the same feed that feeds into our diluent gas that's going to go into our diluent manual add valve and it's going to go to our bailout valve down below this is an older faceplate that's why it looks different also you can have your bov with an automatic diluent valve in the barrel the way that so the, this unit this is my unit this adv is in a t-piece here so it's actually located on your shoulder this is a diaphragm automatic diluent valve so it's going to be different than that mechanical lever that has the spring inside. Right. So 
Now the way that uh, the way that I like to attach this is I'll go directly from the top. Now remember we have these bayonet fittings. I don't know if you can tell, but this is my inhale side. So my inhale side has two kind of clove pieces here, and my exhale side has three. So that's designed so that I don't mix and match by accident and I have a, and I mistake them. So I put in that in uh, I put in that inhale side and then I'm going to rotate it very far off to the side. There you go. Going to rotate it far off to the side and then I'm going to line up my exhale side. It's going to go nice and fit. And there we go. All right. Next, make sure that you guys can see. It's like a lot of, and it's kind of like a big mess, right? Don't worry, everything will clean up nice and uh, nice and easily. So what I'll do is I'll get my handset out of the way. I have my dill hose, and I have. My heads up display that's going to be on my right side basically we're just trying to keep everything nice and organized i've got my inflator hose and i have my edv so now i have you guys see this little dot right here i have a dot that's on my i don't think you guys can see with the glare but there's a little dot right here for the t-piece line them up now the hardest part is to make sure that nothing gets pinched I'll line up the dots there we go there we go make sure it's nice and flush take my so normally I would just go ahead and screw this so what I like to do is I like to use hair ties and I like to put them on my breathing loop does a good job of kind of keeping everything together. Now I have my oxygen hose, I have my heads up display cable, and I have my handset cable on my right side. So just like the other side, I'm going to line up those dots. I know it's a little hard to see, it's a little noisy, but now I have everything kind of fed off to it. Let's see if I can back up a little bit. There you go. So then eventually I'll take my oxygen feed, I'll feed it through. Like I said, I like to use those little hair ties. They do a good job of kind of keeping everything in place. And I'll go ahead and I'll screw this guy into there. The same thing with my diluent hose. I like to uh, put a little hair tie just north upstream of the T-piece. And what that does is that kind of prevents things from bowing up around the cylinders. A little hard to see, but, and I'll screw this guy straight into that diluent feed right there directly in. And so at this point, I'll have, uh, I have everything hooked up. And then what I will do is I will go into my pre-dive checks. So now that we have the back mount unit, I want to show you guys the front mount unit. All right, lots of goodies. So the way that our front mount power lungs, uh, I can either use my loop with my DSV or I can use this loop right here that has a bailout valve. You can see there, it's got our, our fancy logo on here. So um, now this only has, there's only one hose. Now, why do we only have one hose here? We don't have those maps on the right side. Oh, that's right, because we have our manual addition valves 
on our counter lines. So since I don't have the head and the scrubber on here, I'm going to go directly into it. And so since I'm working on this nice table, I can have kind of the loop kind of dragging around a little bit as long as I take good care of it. So this is what I was talking earlier about the T-piece. So if I get water into my mouthpiece right here, if I take this out of my mouth while the loop is still uh, in the open closed circuit position, water will travel into the loop, into the corrugated hose, and it's going to go up into the, uh, it will go up towards the head. Now, one of the problems with, say, side mount, for example, is that it's a straight shot right to the scrubber in the head versus on the front mount counter lungs. If, you put, if we put in this T-piece right here, you can see here there's a wall. So the water is going to hit this wall and it's going to be forced to go into the counter lung where gas can go around and it can go straight to where we need to breathe. So the water is going to hit that T-piece it's going to drain down into the counter lungs here, and then I can blow it out. Versus on the side mount, it's a straight shot. We do have a kind of like a snorkel inside the counter lung that creates a water trap, but it's not going to be as effective as this guy is. There we go. Put in. Now you can see that. In no, uh, in no time is the loop ever going to be like this, allowing it to pop out. So, or if it's like this, it's not going to pop out as well because of those bayonet fittings. Now, to make sure that my oxygen hose is properly routed into my oxygen manual add valve. All right. And then I can take my BOV, and just like Gary was asking, preferred hair tie manufacturer. I don't, whichever is cheap, right? And so now you also don't want to use too tight of a bungee because if the bungee is too tight on this, it's going to crush the loop and it's going to put a lot of strain on these MyFlex hoses, which, and so. Uh, just a simple, you know, loose, you, you always want it to be kind of loose, but just enough to keep everything nice and organized. Let me see if I can screw this guy in. Now, a lot, of, a lot of people like to put an inline shutoff to their BOV feed. And, you know, if you like doing that, then very good. It's, it's good if you have, if you're in a dive and you find that the intermediate pressure is too high and your BOV is kind of leaking, just like it would on a normal second stage regulator. And so that inline valve does a good job of shutting that off, preventing it so you don't have a problem on a dive. And so, but on this unit, since uh, uh, since these guys, we use them for demos and whatnot, they sit pretty shallow. Um, we like, I don't have an inline shut off on this guy yet, but I know some people do and, and it's good. So it's good to have too. So this is our front mount counter lungs with our BOV. All right. So we, uh, I'll take this here. Right. I'll just leave this guy there. So, all right. So, we have our front mount counter lungs. Our, this is our back mount unit right here. Just like we have our all the day please want to make sure that I don't sit on any handset cables all right so let's see if we can go to our main camera we can go here on this big camera right here so that we can see both of the units there we go all right 
So this is our front mount counter lungs. This is our back mount counter lungs. So it's the two different configurations of counter lungs that DiveSoft offers for the Liberty Rebreather. These are our back mounting units. I'm a big fan. I love the back mount. I love diving with the back mount unit, especially off of boats and for cave diving. Um, so they both offer extremely excellent work of breathing on both units. They are CE tested, which is our front mount counter lung unit is about 1.58 joules at about 100 meters with Trimix gas. And so, but it definitely offers the best work of breathing, but both units are excellent, excellent work of breathing. So, well, I hope I was able to answer some of your questions. Uh, I'm so glad that you guys were able to join us for another episode of Dive Talks, or I'm sorry, Dive Soft TV, I do a lot of Dive Talks too. But if you guys have any more questions, be sure to check out our ever expanding library of videos on YouTube and on our Facebook page. And if you guys have any more questions, always feel free to shoot us a message and uh, always answer and ask questions on these live streams. My name is Joe Bosquez and this is DiveSoft TV. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.